Hi everyone, I'm just going to quickly take you through how to create graphs on Microsoft Excel. It's a really good skill to have uh, for projects in geography and science. Uh, we use it um, all through geography, um, including in the National 5 and higher assignments. So um, please persevere and be patient. It does take a while to, to get up to speed. Practice makes perfect. Um, but let's get started. So you'll find Excel um, in your start menu down on the bottom left. Um, I found it under E for Excel. You might find it under M for Microsoft. Um, so have a look for the green symbol that says Microsoft Excel. Um, you start a blank workbook um, and it will come up like this apart from it won't have data in it just here. I've just put that in to speed us up. We're going to start with a temperature graph. Um, so you're going to start with A1 putting uh, the date in. Um, next heading is B um, B1 uh, minimum temperature degree C and then C1 is maximum temperature degree C. You can see that the, the heading for B is partially hidden because it's it's so long. What we can do there is go up to the boundary between B and C and um, get that black arrow symbol and then double click and it will expand it for us. Same again for between C and D and we'll see all our data just there. All right, um, if you put in the dates um, in the following way, so I'll just show you by adding on an extra day, um, 27 forward slash 04, and then hit the tab key, it will automatically fill for you. Um, I'll do that again, 28 forward slash 04, um, tab, it will automatically fill. Okay, and I'll um, make up some figures here as well. So let's go um, 12 and 21, and we'll go 10 and 20. Okay, uh, you can see here I've got a bit of wishful thinking about the, the temperatures next week and um, your figures should be the ones you've recorded um, from the BBC website. I've just made these up um, just to show you what to do. All right, one thing to note is that degree symbol in the heading there. Um, you need to get that from insert um, along at the right hand side symbol, click on symbol and then find that symbol. Um, you have, sometimes have to take a wee while to find it, but once you have found it, it will be it will appear in your recently used symbol. So from now on, it will be really easy to find. You click insert and then you close. All right, you can see it's appeared there, but I don't need that. OK, so hopefully that find, helps you with that symbol there. Sometimes people just use a, a speech mark, um, but try it if you can um, to hunt down that symbol in that uh, insert symbol menu. All right, so you put all your data in like it is shown here, uh, at least seven days of data if you've got, um, if you've collected data for longer, then obviously you can put that in as well. Um, make sure you save your, your work regularly. All right, you should have an S1 geography folder. Um, at this point, I would be going file, um, save as, um, and saving this document. So please make sure you're saving regularly. OK, for the purpose of this, I'm not going to save this one. I'm going to then create my graphs. I'm going to highlight all the cells with data in them. Do not highlight any blank cells because it will make your graph look very weird. Um, so I've got the, the cells um, highlighted there. We're going to make we're going to go insert recommended charts. And we know that for temperature, it's change over time. We need a line graph. All right. So it suggests a bar graph here. It suggests a kind of scatter graph here um, a shaded one here and another bar graph there. But we know this top one is the one for us. And we click OK. All right. So being aware of which graph type you need is important. Um, here you can see our graph and we, you can see that I can change the size of that um, to make it easier to work on. And we're going to start with putting our um, chart title in. Um, so um, our, chart our chart title should be the element. So it's minimum um, and maximum temperatures. Always put your unit. Um, I'm going to go insert symbol degrees C. Oh, got to close it. Degree C, close brackets um, in Edinburgh, and it was between the 20th to 20. This graph shows 28th to 28th. Most of you will be 20 to 20th to 26th, um, April 2020. OK, so we've got our heading in there and um, we can play with the font and the size by highlighting it going home. And um, I want font size 14 and I want it all to be in the same font. Um, it's uh, Calibri. I quite like Calibri. There we go. So minimum maximum temperatures degree C in Edinburgh, 20th to 28th of April 2020. Now, um, you'll be comparing this graph with another graph. So this the next graph you do will have a different location there, but the rest of it will be the same. So you could copy and paste that later on. 
This graph is not quite finished. We need axes labels for our x-axis date and y-axis temperature um, in degree C. So for that, um, we have to go um, up to chart tools and design. And we want add chart element. We want to add something um, to the chart. Axis titles, primary horizontal, first of all. Um, we've got date. And then we want to go um, add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical. And we want that to be um, temperature in degrees. You can see, yeah, well practiced at finding that degree symbol for this graph, uh, degree C. Um, you can see that it's not immediately appearing in this box here, but it is appearing in this um, up here. Um, so once I tab, it appears. OK, so don't panic if you don't see it changing straight away. Um, sometimes you can just click on it and fill it in. OK, and there we've got a lovely graph. and um, we should have the minimum temperature line should always be blue. You don't get a choice on the temperature graph of color. Other graphs you will be able to make look very pretty and um, add different colors. But here we ask that the minimum temperature line should be blue. The maximum temperature line should be traditionally be red. You can see here it's kind of orange. Um, so I'm going to click on it till it's highlighted like this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to put the outline. I want it to be red. OK, so you can see how it changes when I hover over that. All right. And there we have our finished graph. OK, so do make sure you save your work at this point and then you're going to do your second graph for temperature. Um, so to do that, I would recommend that you click on date, drag across, get all the data um, control V. Oh. No, sorry, I've done that wrong. Control C to start with, control copy. And then highlight cells underneath and go control V. And you can see it pastes it all in, saves you loads of time in terms of typing all that stuff in again. We're then going to just delete the data and you'll put in the data for your second location, wherever that was. And you'll repeat the repeat the, um, the steps from, from creating a graph. The difference here will be in your heading instead of Edinburgh, you'll have where your second location was. All right. Do remember to put in a title and access titles because that's where people tend to lose marks. All right. Um, last thing I'll talk about is um, down here, sheet one. I'm going to rename that. I'm going to rename that temperature so that all my temperature data and my temperature graphs are in the same place. All right. When I when I'm ready to move on, when I've got my second temperature graph, I'll click save and then I will um, add go to my second sheet, which will be precipitation. And I'll be making a precipitation graph. Um, there, which I'll put into um, another video for you. OK, so hopefully from that uh, we know how to um, open Excel. We know about how to put in some data and um, we know how to find symbols like the degree symbol. Uh, we know about copying and pasting control C, then control V to paste it. Um, and we know what the graph should look like um, here. So good luck and um, have a go at creating two temperature graphs using Microsoft Excel.